Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about centrifugal and inertia governors. Let us have an overview of what are governors. Governors are basically the speed regulated devices and they control the speed whenever there is variation in load within the specified limits by controlling the flow of working fluid in this this is a very simple graph let's say we are talking about an engine or a turbine so whenever we are designing any machine or a system what we want we want that it should run within the specified speed limit so here we have just plot a graph a simple graph between efficiency and speed and what the curve says that we always want our speed to be within the operational limit right what the red line is showing red line is showing this is the optimum operating speed this red line is the optimum operating speed of course it is not possible for any engine to always work on a constant speed so there are certain variations so we always allow a minimum and a maximum variation which defines the range of speed so this, this is the range of speed the minimum and the maximum speed and we always want an engine or a turbine or whatever machine we are talking about to work within this range and that is why governors are important right now there are various types of governors we know the function of governors they are controlling the speed now this control of speed can be done in two ways one by controlling the energy right and second by dissipating the energy in the first category that is by controlling the energy what the governor is doing it is controlling the supply of the fuel and thus controlling the energy and therefore regulating the speed in energy dissipative types of governors what happens the excessive energy is being lost by the engine through heat or through some other measures so this is not a very desirable system of uh, you know control of speed because we do not want to lose lot of energy for a smaller engine or for a small system or a device it is fine if you are losing small amount of energy but for a large device this is not a desirable method so we usually use the energy control method right now the control of the energy it can be done in two ways the first one is the centrifugal method in which the speed is determining the control of energy right whenever there is change in load the speed changes and therefore we are controlling the supply of the energy and the second category is the inertia right the inertia type of energy control the change is done directly cause of change in acceleration and the acceleration now we know what is acceleration it is instantaneous change in velocity so whenever there is a slight change there is change in acceleration and thus this governor is more sensitive in comparison to centrifugal governor because centrifugal is working on change in speed so whenever there is change in speed it takes certain amount of time for the system to get the feedback and react in order to control speed whereas in inertia it is instantaneous so it works very actively and therefore it is highly sensitive right now the centrifugal governors they have two restoration mechanisms right what do we mean by the restoration mechanism that when a governor is working it has to come back to its original position or maybe the movement the up and down movement right uh, whether vertical or maybe to and fro motion whatever the motion is between the range the upper and the lower range that is done by two methods one is the gravity control right and the second one is the spring control so in gravity control gravity is controlling the action or the movement of the system which is leading to control of the speed and in spring control spring controls the movement in order to control the speed we'll discuss about these in detail in further lectures right centrifugal governors as the name suggests their working is dependent upon the centrifugal effects of the 
fly balls of the masses of fly balls what are these fly balls these are the metallic balls of substantial masses now substantial masses because they have to produce adequate force the force should be enough that after the losses in the whole system it should be enough to operate the throttle valve and therefore it should serve the purpose of the design of the governor right let's see the construction of the governor these are the fly balls or the metallic masses they are attached to these arms which are of negligible mass and these are the upper arms basically and they are pivoted to spindle now the lower arms or the links they are connected to sleeve the movement of sleeve is usually upward and downward and to control the limit of the movement two stoppers are being used as the name again by the name you can understand stopper means you are stopping or controlling the motion the sleeve should not go beyond these two extreme limits right now this sleeve is connected to a bell crank lever which is controlling the motion of the throttle valve when the throttle valve is in near about horizontal position the flow of supply or the fuel supply it reduces when it is in near about vertical position the fuel flow of supply is maximum i do not say perfectly horizontal because you cannot cut off the fuel supply right so we say near about horizontal or near about vertical positions now let's see the basic working of this governor now governor is used for extreme conditions right now two conditions when the load is increasing when the load is decreasing so when the load is decreasing the speed increases let's assume that this diagram is for increased speed condition so when there is increase in speed the speed of rotation of this spindle that increases the centrifugal force because when the rotational speed is n and centrifugal force is m r omega square so when in n increases omega also increases so the centrifugal force on the ball increases and the balls they move upward right and when the balls are moving upward the sleeve it also moves upward and thus it causes the throttle valve to minimize or to reduce the supply of the fuel accordingly and thus the mean or the average speed is maintained now when the reverse of this happens when the load increases what happens the speed decreases when speed decreases the speed of rotation of spindle decreases the centrifugal force on the ball decreases right so balls they lower down it comes to a position something like this right so when it decreases this sleeve it moves downward and the motion transferred through bell crank lever is such that it causes the throttle valve to increase the supply of fuel and thus the output is uh, controlled and the mean speed is maintained inertia governors as the name suggests it works on the principle of inertia of matter and the operation principles there are basically two operation principles which affect the position of balls which are the angular acceleration or deceleration plus the centrifugal force now through links and springs the position in change of balls it opens or closes the throttle valve which in turn controls the supply of fuel to the engine right we see there is this mass right this mass which is uh, which which is centered at point g and it is fixed to an arm which is pivoted to rotating disc on the engine so arm is connected in such a way that it operates the fuel supply valve so whenever there is change in angular speed of disc it causes the ball masses to have the angular movement and in cases when acceleration or deceleration is very small which which means that the change in velocity is very less this governor also starts acting as the centrifugal governor because the function of acceleration and deceleration it uh, it doesn't make much difference right now these are highly sensitive governors because acceleration is the instantaneous change so for a small or the slight change in the uh, velocity of the system the fuel supply changes right 
Now, uh, we will have a quick comparison between the centrifugal and inertia governors. We know the working principle for centrifugal, centrifugal forces, moment of inertia. Now, the rotation, it takes place in the horizontal plane. In this, the rotation of masses, it is in the vertical plane. They are not directly attached to the shaft, whereas they have the direct attachment. Now, in these cases, the balancing of referred revolving masses is set up. So, they are more preferable in comparison to the inertia governors. Inertia governors, they are more sensitive, which means they have a rapid response to changes. But they have the practical difficulty of arrangement of revolving parts of governor. To completely balance the whole system therefore usually centrifugal governors are more preferred over the inertia governors thank you